Welcome to the Sam Livecast. I'm Sam, and while this is not so live, it's still a great live cast, right? Hell yes. Hell yes. You were almost about to call it a live cast. I didn't. I don't know what to call it. It's still a live cast. Maybe. It's still live. No. We're shooting this live. Exactly. It's not necessarily airing live, but hey, it's all good. David Letterman live. It's David Letterman live. Yeah, you've always used that distinction. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting because I mean, that's Letter- what the- Letterman and Leno and Conan, and, they all say that they have guys, a live right. show. Yeah. Wait, can you see? You can't see their shows live at home anywhere, right? Even East Coast. Live at home? No, no, no. Because they, because they tape it like what five afternoon? Or yeah, it's like afternoon. two or three in the afternoon, mm-hmm. mm. and then it rolls live later. And then it rolls live. Anyway, oh. uh, we talk about food, we cook food, we have fun, and that's what this is. It's oh yeah. Simple. Go to thesamlivecast.com or facebook.com slash send the cooking guy and send us some questions that we can answer. Uh, check out all of our recipes. We've got 230 or so episodes and lots of good pictures and stuff. So head to the website and uh, thank you. So two things. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're calling it Sandwich Week. And, I'm, and tonight I'm making something called a Tuna Cristo, which is my version of a Monte Cristo. Mm. A Monte Cristo sandwich is, is basically ham and cheese. A, a ham and cheese sandwich that's been dipped in um, like a French toast uh, batter. Batter. Okay, so a- egg on so the it's outside. Beaten egg with a little milk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you you make the ham and cheese. You dip it in this beaten egg with a little milk. Then you cook it in a nonstick pan, and then you hit it with when it comes out and you serve it. You hit it with powdered sugar. And serve it with jam or syrup. I, I don't get that. It doesn't work in my mind. Yeah, that's... I'm not going to do that with mine. But I'm also not using uh, ham. I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use tuna. I'm going to make a tuna Cristo. Nice. Honestly, I find it a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. And I like tuna. I think it's great to keep around the house. You've always got bread. You probably always have a can of tuna. Mm-hmm. You know, th- th- you should be able to make this like that. All and you, cheese. All you young men out there, one yeah, of my favorite absolutely. things to do in college was just buy like five cans of tuna for right. five bucks um, and then make a huge batch of tuna salad. Just put it in a Tupperware in the fridge. You're good for sandwiches and tuna melts for the whole week. It's amazing and it's healthy. You know, there's a, uh, um, a very um, famous pasta italian pasta recipe that uses canned tuna really yes you make the pasta you toss it with canned tuna and olive oil and some olives and, and whatever it is that does, kind of does stuff. it have a name the recipe <laughs> el, el, el toro something oh wait isn't it's not one of those recipes that um Oh no, you're not. Are you not talking there about is, pasta puttanesca? Which no, is, no, 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 no. That they late in the night they would just kind of throw everything into no, it. No pasta. With We've tuna. made that Hold recipe. On. I'm pretty sure on the Let live. Me if cast. I can find this, pasta with tuna, and uh, I'm not seeing an Italian name for it, but I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of recipes for it. Yeah, and it's it's good. Think um, think tuna uh, casserole, but a little more sophisticated version, and no potato chips. Not the potato chips are a bad thing, but it's just not not happening in this particular tuna recipe. casserole. Another great recipe that we yeah. made on the samlivecast.com. Do you see what's happening here? No, I don't. So know. we're shooting out. It's uh, it's two o five in the afternoon, and now we've got this major sun problem that we've not really had to deal with before. Oh, is it starting to fall? And this we've got this <laughs> completely effing makeshift. Should I get a shot of it? Yeah, you should. Okay. You can get a shot of it after whenever. This completely makeshift blanket up on the, up on the glass to keep the, the light from coming in. You see this little piece right here? Max is laughing. Sorry. It is what... Uh, we'll work it out. There's always... There know. it is. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's so ghetto. <laughs> oh, it is so ghetto. But we'll figure something out. Pretty certain ghetto is not a plug politically correct term anymore oh is it not sorry no i'm sure it's not anyway uh so i want to talk about napa because we were just there <clears throat> and i don't want you thinking that i'm a napa sophisticate because i'm not i've only been a couple times and you're not even really wine people 
We're not really wine people. Sorry, let but me I, rephrase that. You are like, not wine people, period. I am not <laughs> wine people, period. No, that's right. That's a very good distinction. But what's important in saying that is that we had such an amazing time and very little of it had to do with the wine. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had an amazing time because we went with our closest friends. Haley, please stop that. Sorry, you can't see her. Haley, come here. Haley. What is she, she trying to do? standing scratching at the window like she oh. wants to go out. And just so people watching don't think I'm an ass wipe because I'm not letting my dog go out to go to the bathroom. They don't go to the bathroom in the backyard. No, they, they don't. We have a canyon here and, you know, grass. There's no grass in the backyard and the dogs don't go to the bathroom there. She wants me to open the door and I'm going to open it and she's going to go. Yeah, she's. All right, thanks. And then she'll and then walk away from there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she'll turn around. She won't do that. So lest you think that I'm a wine snob and I go to nap all the time and I live it high on the hog, I don't. But very good friends of ours, our, arguably our closest friends, Ken and Debbie, live in San Francisco, and they, they have a, a, a familial connection to Napa. So we went with them uh, Thursday to Sunday and had, honestly, the best time. And I will say, Max, that they are people that we could travel with mm-hmm. everywhere. And that's a rare thing, you know, finding oh, yeah. people that you can do that Compatibility with. Compatibility for traveling. I mean, it's you, a could huge have, thing. you could be best friends with a couple or, or somebody and you can't travel with them. Right. Let me say that if, you're, if you've not been to Napa, you need to do it. It's really driving time. It's about an hour and a, and a half from, not even, I'd say it's an hour and a quarter maybe from San Francisco. Wow. And it's... North, right? North. It is so is it, lovely. Sorry, really quick. North East? Is a little bit in because I'm no, trying to think, think of like northwest. where's that in relation to Berkeley? Because Berkeley's I no northwest. Idea. I thought Berkeley was northwest. Of. All I know is I feel like we passed through Berkeley on the way there and back. Oh, okay. So it's beyond. It's past Berkeley, whatever that direction that is. Got it. And what direction is that? Do you know? No, I don't. Somebody will uh, let us know. Okay. Facebook.com/slash Sam the Cooking Guy. So we went. So here's a couple of pictures. I'm going to just take you through some of these pictures, right? Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a famous Napa sign there that we got a picture of uh, Kelly. We, we hiked her up into that, and, and it's, it's nice. Hiked her up into that? Well, it's put, about six feet off, six or, seven, six or seven feet off the ground or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a bunch of other sign, but I cropped it just to show that part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we are, the two of my, me and Kel and our friends Ken and Debbie. We're actually, um, this is just, just, just off to the side of that Napa sign. There were some other people standing there pulled off to the road to, to take pictures. And of course, this time of year, everything, all the grapes are dormant. So what you're seeing are vines, and these vines have yet to be pruned back, and they prune them back over a series of pruning sessions mm-hmm. that get down to almost no of those sticky things and then the grapes start to grow uh, off of those thick vines that you see that go down to the ground. So, really quickly, is yeah. there nothing there? Because if you went it's right the now, you, winter. if you go there right now, you won't see a grape anywhere. So, like a new harvest is going to be coming in the spring, and then everything else. It'll I'm start assuming. growing in, in the spring, and they will be harvesting in, say, late August. Got I it. think August, September. Um, and I know because I was up in uh, a place called Paso Robles yes. for uh, the Olive Oil Festival. I was uh, doing some video work up there. Right. And I've talked to a ton of uh, the, like, the producers and people who work on these uh, olive oil vineyards. Right. And, I mean, the process is really cool how they do it. It's really, I mean, it's really absolutely an art. It, there's oh, a yeah. real finesse to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you do it and the style in which you do it and the way that these particular vines behind us here in this picture are growing Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that everybody does it that way. There's a thing, I think it's called deadheading, where there's those sticks aren't there, those metal poles to help guide the way that the olives, the the grapes grow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there isn't that and they just sort of let them free flow, but there's a real art to how much you let grow because you have to you have to let them provide their own cover as shade or they'll burn up too much in the hot sun when the mm. sun gets bright and stuff like that. So anyway, so, you know, Napa is the, the southernmost. The city of Napa is the most southern part of this whole Napa Valley. And then you go through Yonteville, which the French Laundry, uh, arguably one of the top five, six, seven restaurants in the world is. Thomas Keller, probably the most famous chef in the world, uh, never eaten there. Uh, I'd like to one day. And th- so you go through Yontville, and then you go through St. Helena, 
And then at the top kind of is an area called Calistoga, and that's where we stayed. And um, here's a picture of the little town of Calistoga. Beautiful. It really is one street. Holy crap. One street. Super freaking pretty. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that's amazing. Right? Look at that. And we stayed at the Calistoga Spa. Wow. And it's not the, um, it's not, you know, like fancy. It's, that's not it's, fancy? <laughs> I, I know, I know it looks like it, but I'm saying the rooms aren't, nothing is, is elegant. Yeah. It's nice, but the spa is all about this, this mineral water. Wow. That comes wow. directly from the ground a few hundred yards away from there. That looks and it comes out of the ground at about 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. They have to cool it down. And then this mineral water, this ridiculously healthy mineral water, comes into this particular big giant spa at about 104 degrees. Mm -hmm. And there's other ones that are slightly less temperature. But every morning about 8 o'clock, we got into this. And every night when we come ba came back from what we were doing, we got into this. That's and like... Does it, does it get any better than that? It doesn't get any better than that. The water is a supposed... People have been coming here for years and years and years because of the medicinal properties of this water, of wow. this, this, you know, uh, water. Here's another picture. I mean, it looks pretty fancy, the Calistoga Spa. They got some great photos. They do. I mean, it, it's, it's... You look at it and you go, oh, it's going to be super expensive and stuff, and it's not. And so here's another one of the pools that's lesser degrees of that thing that we were in and... Here's another shot. And you can see it's a low-rise sort of hotel-motel kind of thing. It's lovely in a fire pit and stuff like that. But that's where we stayed. It was fantastic. And that was our, obviously our base camp and stuff. Look, check this out. Uh, on the other side of Napa to the west is Sonoma and a little area called Glen Ellen. And this is the Benzinger, Benzinger Winery. And this is one of their underground caves this is built into the side of a hill wow a cave where they have this giant dining room that will hold like 90 people that's one long ass table for all kinds of events but the important part of the caves is not where you can dine but it's where they store their wine what? look at that look at that Jeez. that's mom standing and these barrels are all the dated and marked and they're, I mean, this is literally how they store the wine. Those barrels the look so cool. French oak barrels. And Max, this just goes way back around that corner really? and down a long way in another corner. It's insane. I want insanely cool. And they built, they, this is not a natural cave. This is a cave that they had to dig the hell out of to get in there. And this is shit that you get to see if you go to Napa. And the wine tasting, you go to the wineries and for anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks, you get to sample five or six of their wines. You learn about them, you taste, you can go on tours if you want, and you get to see stuff like this. I'm telling you, you don't have to be a wine person to appreciate the beauty of Napa, the, the amazingness of the wineries. And the geography that's there and the trees and the, and this was dead of winter, really, we had just a fantastic and time. you guys got some good weather luckily we had we had good weather like we've had here in san diego it's been nice no you're gonna be confusing people because last week we were complaining about how cold we were I know. well look at don't get me wrong i mean here here this picture of us right now the the mustard grasses are are in full bloom in napa and this is wow. one of the fields you see those big three piles off to the left Yes. When they prune back the, uh, the uh, vines, the grape vines, all the cuttings, they put in big piles like that, and then there are certain burn days that let them burn that stuff. Oh, cool. Um, but these mustard grasses are everywhere right now. And so look at This was yesterday. It's probably 63 degrees outside, maybe 64. Uh -huh. But at night, when we'd get out of a restaurant at like 9 o'clock, 9.30, It'd be 30 degrees. Jeez. It's way down. Okay, so here's a picture you'll appreciate. Here's Ken. Mm -hmm. This is at the... God, what winery is this called? Castello di something. It's built like a castle. The guy that built it, built it as, a, as an homage to his family. Okay? Really? His Italian family. Castillo, Castello di... I'll look it up in a second. Mm-hmm. So this is Ken. As you drive up in the property before the castle, there's this little, it's like a little mini chapel. It's really tiny. It's maybe, you know, 25 feet uh, 
uh, square inside, mm -hmm. 25 square feet inside. Yesterday was the anniversary, the 35th anniversary of Ken's dad passing away. And as we pull up here, he goes, you know what? His father was Italian. He would love this. I just want to go in that chapel and just say a little prayer to myself. And I jumped out of the car with him. And mom goes, leave him alone. And I go, I want to be with my friend. <laughs> and I went in with him and we stood there for a minute. And I said, I want, you to, I want you to share a memory. The first thing that comes to mind of your dad. And he, he talked about his dad speaking Italian to his aunt in the hospital when his, his dad's aunt was passed away, was, was, was dying. And it was amazing. And this looks like, Ken looked at this picture after and he goes, I feel like I'm in Italy right there. Look how beautiful it does. that is. It looks that like Tuscany. is Napa, ladies and gentlemen. You have to go. You have to go. I've never been. I'm dying yeah, to. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. It's a great spot. What a trip. It really was a good trip. Yeah. Really special. Really, really special. And Ken uh, and his, his, uh, his immediate family are, are making their own wine from these five rows that they have. Really? Um, from a huge vineyard that a guy grows and manages fields for some of the, the biggest wineries around. And the wine Ken's making from these five little rows is unbelievable, Max. So wait, I'm curious. Yeah. You can, you can maybe like make a deal with one of the large landowners up there and say we want five rows to make our own like special well, honestly i think wine. unless you have family family relationships and you've been doing this a long time uh -huh. oh no of course ken, not everybody but i mean right. like somebody like ken, technically like, you could so so this guy that ken knows has many many acres of property mm -hmm. that the big wineries sterling will come in and and say we want this plot of land here mm -hmm. and then they'll they'll work it and stuff the land is, is in Napa is in this particular section is particularly excellent because it's a high um, level of volcanic activity was there years ago. Lots wow. of volcanic rock that somehow contributes in a most excellent way, especially to the cabs. And, and Ken is making a uh, Cabernet that he's calling five rows that is stupid good. I mean, I'm telling you, better than... Most cabs that I've had yeah. without paying ridiculous sums of money and then even a ridiculous sum of money, which I wouldn't pay that somebody might bring. Mm -hmm. uh, Those bottles are all just over it. there. <laughs> exactly. Those bottles that we don't buy, other people buy. Yeah. Anyway, I, I wanted to talk about my, my cooking career, but... Thursday? I, I feel like it's too much. <laughs> Friday. Friday, yeah. Friday, Friday. I feel like it's too much. Just a quick reminder to anybody that... Uh, doesn't know we're going to be doing shows posting our new shows on monday wednesday and fridays you should be able to wake up and find them yeah and watch them at your leisure mm -hmm. bookmark uh go to itunes watch them there send them to friends when you like something you know you can just copy the link on youtube or on the sam livecast page and send it to somebody of course if you want to be really specific if there's something that we've covered whether it's napa or the sandwich that i'm about to make you can on YouTube, and I don't have to do it now for you. I can show you sometime how you can pick out a specific starting point on a YouTube video yep. so that somebody doesn't have to wade through stuff that you don't want them to see. And, of course, we would hope that you would want them to see all of this. But if they didn't want, if you didn't want to do that, you could, you could find a way to do it. Yes. Uh, you know, I'll just mention we all have been a sponsor of the show for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they uh, sell in their stores and online only... 100% certified California extra virgin olive oils. Boom. Some of which would come from the Napa Valley area or Sonoma or Glen Ellen or Calistoga. They don't have olive oils that are suspect. 100% California certified. That means when it says extra virgin, it means extra virgin. You can go online to weolive.com, scope out everything they have. In the top right-hand corner, it says shop now. Type in my name, Sam, and you'll get 10% off your full order. Yep. Weolive.com. They have 10 stores you can check out or online. Weolive.com. Shop now code is SAM and you get 10% off your order. And just so you guys know, February is American Heart Month, which we all is very active in. And they are actually going to be providing us with a shit ton of good stuff for us to give away to you guys. We are going to be giving away something new literally every show. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do they like their stuff being referred to as 
the good shit as a shit ton <laughs> a shit ton of stuff they're probably okay with it yeah their olive oil is amazing and it's sitting mm-hmm. right back there it is and um, stay tuned because february is like i said american heart month and they've got some great fundraisers and charity stuff and uh just to raise awareness we're going to be giving away stuff so don't miss us in february i need to uh i need to do something about my blood pressure it's a little bit high oh not a lot high but a little bit high did you go to the doctor recently yeah when I had my stitches, mm-hmm. that you know, you go to the hospital for anything, for hemorrhoids. Not that I have hemorrhoids, I don't. Oh, and they check but your blood you, pressure. But they check your blood pressure when you mm-hmm. go in. And you go to the doctor, and I went because I had the bronchitis and the flu thing last week. You go, they check, they, t- they weigh you, mm-hmm. they take your temperature, they take your blood pressure. I guess three pretty good indicators of what's going on in your life. Yeah. Especially if it changes. They put it on the chart. And if they see you've gone from the 180 pounds to 200 Yeah. 50 pounds, <laughs> something's going wrong. Uh-huh. But blood pressure, also, they check that and temperature. So I just went in for a physical like a month ago or so, yeah. and they did blood pressure, temperature, all that crap. Didn't yeah. say a word to me about it after. Yeah. Which I can assume that I'm good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there was something, they would have said something. I think they would have told you, yeah. yeah. I mean, they told me I had a temperature. They told me that my blood blood pressure she didn't she goes i mean i ask what it is i'm old enough i need to i know i need to ask these questions Mm -hmm. and i said what is it and she goes i don't remember what the number was she and i go how is it she goes well it's a little bit high which means i need to do something about it which means i should probably have a a good sit down conversation with my doctor i had to see somebody else that day or exercise and start eating a little bit more sensibly Hmm. i haven't been eating really well but hey maybe we could have Heart month. Lower blood pressure week. Lower your blood pressure blood pressure week. <laughs> yeah. How many different ways you can steam broccoli? Mm. I'm kidding. Or juice. Or juice, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't be doing that. Anyway. Okay. Uh, I'm ready to cook something. Are you ready to cook something? Yeah, we're ready. Let's hit it. Before I start cutting the sycamore, let me remind people our sponsor, Fixtures Living. You check them out, fixtureslivingcom or on the Facebook.com forward slash Fixtures Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, everything you would need for this kind of junk. And, well, not junk, amazing stuff in your home and bathrooms and outdoor stuff. And outdoor stuff means what? It means grills and uh, green eggs, cooking services. Outdoor kitchens and Evos uh, and Evos and all kinds of stuff. They're an amazing place and we love them not just because they're a sponsor, because they are legitimately amazing and I have loved them since way before they ever decided to start advertising on the live cast. Fixtureslivingcom check them out on Facebook, like them, tell them the live cast sent you, and you'll be very happy. All right, so here's what I got to do I have to open up some tuna. And I've not had this before. This is my nephew, Mark. This is the one that he buys, Polar, and he buys it at... Uh, I always have such a hard time deciding which to buy. Yeah, well, I don't buy the oil one, for a start. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he buys this... Where does he buy this? Smart and Final. Is that right? I think he gets it Smart and Final, and he says it's great. It's the only one that he buys, so... Anyway, let's find out. So you got to get rid of this water. It comes in in so much water. It does. I don't want that water. So what's the difference with the oil? Well, just the oil. And I don't really want that oil. It just gives it a different flavor? It does, and it's nice. But I think, you know, in terms of fat, even though olive oil is is generally considered good fat, Mm -hmm. um, this is just a little bit lighter and... In terms of calories, definitely less, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So we've got this tuna. I gotta put it in something. We'll use this big bowl. There you go. I have to say, I always rinse these cans out before I put them in my recycle. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, the recycle's gonna reek. Oh yeah. I already it will be the <laughs> it will be the reek cycle. All right. So here's what I want to add to this. I want to add some uh, ikema. And do you hikama. like this? everybody like hikama? Hikama. hikama. Which hikama. is it? It's J. It's hikama. I, it is hik. Yes. Hikama. Hik- 
jicama? Okay, so jicama is like a, it's like a cross between a, um, a pear, uh, an apple, and, and a cucumber. And a cucumber. Because it's kind a vegetable. Of. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah, I think so. It is a vegetable. I think you're right. It's great, though. It's one of my favorite things to snack on. So here's what I like. Yeah, I mean, really good in a salad, uh, and really good this way. I'll show you. What so I do, what I do is I just cut, I peel a whole one. I cut all the skin off. Yeah. And then I dice it all up into little uh, squares, and then yeah. I just throw it into a Tupperware, and I use that as a snack. Oh, that's a great idea. Because there's nothing. It's full. Of, look, it's full of water. So it's exactly. It's all water. It's so healthy. And super crunchy. That's why it's like a cucumber. But we're gonna dice it up so it's small, little bites into uh, into our tuna salad. And look at adding a little crunch to a tuna salad is a great thing, regardless of whether you're making it like a little Monte Cristo thing like we are, right? And sometimes you can, I mean, if you're looking for that crunch in your sandwich that you normally get from chips, but you wanna make it a little bit healthier, this is the perfect way. It's a good idea, Maxi. Okay, here's the other thing. Uh, I want a little color in here, so I'm gonna use a little, a little red pepper. Mm. These sleeves just don't stay. Hmm. Okay. Red pepper. When I need a little bit, I just cut the sides off and then throw it in a bag for the stuff that I'm not using. Mm -hmm. And then it's very easy just to take it out and do this. If I was gonna make some, um, if I was gonna make some uh, eggs or something, a little omelet, a little red pepper is amazing to have in there. Mm -hmm. And now it's all ready to go. Make your life easy. Just get your stuff ready in advance. Okay, this goes in, this goes in. You think what else I need? Don't need this anymore, don't need this anymore. No mayo. And here's the mayo that I'm going to use. Talk about it all the time. The QP, sorry. The Japanese mayo, amazing. Little salt, little pepper. For anybody wondering what he's looking at, he's looking at oh, his it's right there. grocery list. Yeah. There it is. Not my grocery list, just my sorry, yeah. reminder. Ingredient list. Okay, pepper, salt, good, right? I can tell you I need more mayo, I think. I like it moist. I don't like dry. Sorry for the noise, too. Okay. I don't like dry uh, tuna at all. Yeah, I'm with you there. Mm hmm. Monday we made the, uh, we made the, uh, oh, that inside out, the inside out sandwich with the chicken and the Hawaiian rolls. Oh yeah. What did you say when you took a bite of it? It was unbelievable. I mean. Yeah. You actually said, I will take the rest of this. Oh home. yeah. I took a bite and then I immediately said, wrap this up. I want it for my dinner later. <laughs> right. Okay. This is good. You know what another cool thing about the QP is? What? Just its container. A little squeeze tube. Well, yeah. You never you know see what? mayo in those. But I'll tell you something. The thing is, the weird thing is, is that when I first bought it, mm -hmm. I was freaked out by the squeeze tube-ness yeah. of it. Yeah. To me, somehow the fact that it did not come in glass uh -huh. made it sort of substandard. But, but it what it makes it is it makes it really easy to use. I don't need a spoon to use this. Yeah. Open it up and then spoon some out. It's a, it's a great way. Okay. Another, another great thing you do is those squeeze bottles right over there that you put your olive oil and stuff in. Yeah. Then just easily grabbed and put right in a pan. Mm-hmm. These guys. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot of mayo in, but... You definitely are a mayo guy. That was... Yeah, but that was a it was a that was one of those big cans. Yeah. Mom and I have always given you shit about how much mayo you use. My but my my food is good though. It is. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I got that heating. Um I'm gonna use you could use any kind of bread. I'm using challah, which is like a 
traditional sort of Jewish egg bread. It's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really good. So let's see. I won't make it too big. Couple slices. It's a beautiful piece of bread. It's a beautiful, and it smells so good, right? So now when I have bread like this, you notice how there was a slope, so this guy's a little smaller? Mm -hmm. I'll turn that guy around so that it's kind of uh, a little bit bigger The I don't know why I do that. Why do I do that? <laughs> Hold on, how do I? Maybe I shouldn't. Forget that I just said I was gonna do that. All right, so here's what we do. Here's what I need. I need an egg. I need a little bit of milk. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no. Where's my... Perfect. This is sort of a French toast-like. So we beat the egg. Make sure you get it all beat nice. A little bit of milk. Okay. Now, some of these recipes call for, I don't think it's nutmeg or vanilla. Oh, it's vanilla at this point. And I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't want to add the, that sweet component to this whole thing. Not like not. I'm also not adding um, uh, powdered sugar and syrup to it. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. I won't double up the cheese necessarily like I did with the, uh, um, I'll just take a little bit to cut with the With the uh, sandwich from Monday? With the, uh, the sandwich on the, uh, what's it, whatever it was called. Monday. What was it called? Yeah. No, but what was inside that thing out. called? The inside out. Okay, good. We got this, right? So this goes here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Spread this out. So everybody's happy so far. If this was a true Monte Cristo, this would be ham and cheese, and it's not, so I don't have to worry about that. I'll make my own version. This goes on top. Okay, this is hot enough. I'm gonna try not to burn the F out of this like I did. Uh, <laughs> you can come over here, man. That was on for like a second. The other day? Yeah. Ugh, I'm so mad about that. I was so mad about that. Still tasting great. Mm hmm. Sandwich butter. Now you're cooking this really like French toast, right? Same way, butter down, non stick. Here we go. And now here comes the sandwich. In, let it soak a little bit. Turn it. I've always been curious about how much you should let it soak. Just that much, you don't need any okay. more than that. And then this. And there we go. Nice. Uh, if you don't have a grill pan like this, of course, you can use any kind of nonstick pan. When we put this stove in, this came as part of it. I took it out of the box and I set it up on here just because I wanted to see all the toys and, and get excited about it. Mm -hmm. I fully intended to take it off after that first day or first couple of days. It's never come off of here. And I use this thing probably three to five times a week, at least. You can buy separate ones. If you don't have this kind of setup, you can buy a separate grill pan or griddle pan or a double-sided one, flat on one side and ridged on the mm. other, that you can just put across your burners or put over one burner that makes all the difference in the world for making uh, large amounts of things or pancakes or whatever, that kind of stuff. Yeah, French look, toast. this is just right over a regular flame. Right. Burnt? Oh, I'm happy. Oh no, this is gonna be perfect, man. Are you kidding? I love that. I'm not making a, I'm not making a mistake this time. I'm letting this one go exactly the way it's supposed to. 
But what this means is I now have an opportunity to clean up a little bit. I that talk should about, be your motto, clean as you go. It is my motto. I yeah. talk about it all the time, and I don't know why I can't get enough people to follow me in that. Look at while this is there, I've got easily a couple of minutes to make a couple of small, uh, to make some dents in this cleaning, so I don't have to do it all later. And I don't know why I would want to wait. I wouldn't. I can put the bread away, put the cheese away, do this stuff at home. I'm telling you, it's so much nicer when you're finished your meal and 80% of the cleaning work is done and you don't then have to start doing everything. All right, let's have a look. Okay, ready? I'm going to turn this guy around. Looks perfect. And now, look how beautiful and gorgeous brown this is. That's lovely, right? Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to use this. There we go. Okay, that's doing its thing. I'm really sensitive because I don't want to burn it mm -hmm. like the other day. I felt really bad about that, but the sandwich was still super amazing. It was. Okay, I'm almost there, Maxie. No problem. I'm almost I'm gonna, there. I'm get a shot over here. Yeah, tell me how beautiful that is, right? All right, here we go. And now these things that I've, you know how much I'm in love with these containers. Mm -hmm. They're actually soup containers. I paid 40 bucks, I think, or 30 some odd dollars for 250 of them. And they're so much better than the Tupperware. So much better, I just. Yeah, and you don't care about throwing those ones away. No, but I don't, that's just it. I didn't need to buy 240. I thought I'd be okay throwing them away. But the thing is, is that they clean really well in the dishwasher. Oh, do they? Yeah. And then they just go in here, look it, and they can live with all my other, with all my other junk, yep. right? Chicken, whatever, this, this, this. It's all good. Don't okay. burn it. I won't, I promise. Oh my God. Oh my God, you beautiful. got close. <laughs> no, this is really nice. It's crazy how the difference between perfect and burnt can be like three seconds. God, it's awful. Look, I'm completely done. What am I going to have to do when this is finished? Clean this spatula and then do this, right? Uh, and then this, this thing. So there we are. Okay, we'll give it another 20 seconds. I'm going to cut it, I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to be super happy. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. If there's things that you want us to make, send us an email. If there's things that you don't know how to do, send us an email. Info at thesamlivecast.com. Go on the Facebook, cookingguy.com on Facebook. Send us a message. Let us know what is up with you and what you would like. Tell your friends. And tell your friends. Mm. I'm wow. telling you, this is a sandwich. Look at this in here. Look at the melty cheese. Look at this edge right there, right? Nice. How nice is that? Beautiful. God. Monte Cristo, a tuna Cristo. Okay. The crunch from the jicama, the crunch from the red pepper. This is a near perfect sandwich. I don't know. Who invented the Monte Cristo version with the ham and the cheese? I think this one's better. I think this one's better. And I want you to make it. Thanks for hanging out with us. Friday, brand new video goes up. Watch, make the food. Don't eat the same thing all the time. We're here to tell you you don't have to do that. It's too easy making stuff like this. We just made it live in front of you, all right? Thanks for being here. Tell your friends, have a good rest of the day. We'll see you on the next new video on the Sam Livecast. Thanks.